The Hammers have kick-started their positive form this year in the 5-4-1 formation, but ever since the injury to the first team left-back, they reverted to a back four and the 4-2-3-1 formation that they utilise most prominently under David Moyes. We will discuss the advantages of the 4-2-3-1 from the West Ham perspective and throughout this video, we will go in depth with the Football Manager 2021 David Moyes tactic that got me and West Ham into Champions League football. Incredible stuff. So before we do, before we get started make sure if you are new or you haven't yet hit the like button hit the subscribe button and also leave a comment this tactical analyst is brought to you by myself rdf and the mastermind website also a big shout out to all my patreons but for now let's get started Moyes' team have only kept 42% of the ball this season, the sixth lowest in the Premier League. Since they spend an awful lot of time without the ball, their 4-2-3-1 shape is actually more likely to be the shape of a compact 4-4-1-1, as the attacking midfielder joins the striker in the first line of pressure. One of the strengths to this mid to low block that they deploy is that they remain very very close together, moving in harmony. The fullbacks and wide midfielders in particular are practically on top of each other in defensive phases, working together to stop attacks. For all their time spent without the ball, it's impressive that they're only allowed 19 crosses in per game. They've delivered 21 per game to bring some context which is the joint third highest in the league. West Ham have been perfectly happy to have the opposition spend time on the ball, passing it around as the hammers shift and slide from left to right, right to left. When they win the ball, they frequently look to spring it forward with longer passes, although they can be comfortable in possession with the likes of Rice and Cresswell taking charge. The hammers have completed around 61 long passes per game, the sixth most in the league. They've also won the second most aerial duels per game, 20.9, behind only to Burnley. Their long balls are often spread into the wider areas for their speedy attackers to run onto as the fullbacks join the attack and get forward to combine. After getting a hold of the ball higher up the pitch, the wingers also frequently invert or drift inside with the ball at their feet as the fullbacks overlap. This approach has been very effective in helping Moyes' men create chances, with 12.3 shots per game, the 7th best in the league. This means that they do a fantastic job in creating chances, taking shots and even scoring far more goals than would expected of a team with their amount of possession. The Hammers are actually quite deadly in attack despite having little to do with the ball. West Ham's defensive stability has been one of the biggest improvements from their play this season in comparison to previous seasons. With two very solid central midfielders, who also happen to be giants, West Ham's aerial presence and ability to cover space in midfield areas makes them very tough to break down. This is one of the primary benefits of the 4-2-3-1 as opposed to a 4-1-4-1 or 4-3-3 as the weight of the defensive responsibilities can be spread across two players rather than one. They can work in tandem together, shift independent on the side of the ball and link up with the winger and fullback to create a trio of players capable of shutting down wide areas together. With this level of defensive resilience, patience and cover, it then becomes very hard for the opposition to create overloads in wider areas and or deliver crosses. When crosses or longer passes do find their way forward to the big men at the back, the Hammers are more than capable of winning their aerial duels. Several of the defensively minded players have won significantly more than they have lost in the air. This defensive stability has contributed to an impressive tally of just 28 goals conceded in their 24 matches, which happens to be the 7th best defensive record in the league so far. No team has conceded fewer with less possession with the ball, again making West Ham a very interesting side. Going forward, the Hammers win a lot of free kicks and corners. Importantly, with all of their aerial presence in both attack and defence, they are particularly effective at converting them. David Moyes' team have scored 12 goals from set pieces this season, the joint most in the league. West Ham clearly pay a lot of attention to their set pieces in training and it's paying off for them as a key mechanism in both stopping goals from going in and scoring them at the other end. It's not as though they do anything particularly tactically elaborate, they just have a few exceptional deliverers in Aaron Croswell, Jared Bowen and Saeed Ben Rama to start off. 
Creswell is most likely to be the set piece taker on a consistent basis, assisting five, creating a chance and a half per game, and delivering two crosses per game. But it's evidently not just the quality of delivery, but also the threat and aerial ability that so many of their players possess. Moyes' team have scored 9 goals with their head this season, many of which have come from free kicks and corners. Virtually all of West Ham's centre backs pose a threat. Ogbonna, Dawson and Balbuena have all scored from set pieces this season, in addition to the man on everyone's lips, Thomas Suchet, who's bagged 4 of his 8 goals from free kicks and corners. The sheer fact that they have so many talented players in the art of heading and winning duels in the air reduces the opposition side to a near impossible task. If for example, they double team on Antonio, Suchek may climb over his smaller defender or find space to control the ball and pull it into the back of the net. Or if from a set piece there's still a Bonner, Dawson and Babuena or Rice to worry about. Most teams simply do not have enough aerial presence to even handle Suchek and Antonio, let alone handle three or four others who can also find the back of the net. In defence, their mixture of zonal and marking means they can have the exact same aptitude and rarely ever concede. It's perhaps a bit old fashioned, but what else do you expect from a David Moyes and West Ham side? They have been very effective at playing to their strengths, for that, the team and manager deserve immense amount of credit. Lastly for this little bit of analyst, we are now going to look at West Ham statistics. West Ham so far have scored the 7th most goals in the Premier League, 37 goals, whilst taking the 8th most shots in the league, 293 shots at goal, and this may suggest that West Ham are a positive side. In possession, they have only a 76 pass completion rate whilst attempting 10,278 passes with 2,590 of those passes being high balls, passes in the air. Creating chances, West Ham are in second place when it comes to creating chances by dead ball situations, 54 chances created by dead ball. 31 of their chances came from a shot that led to another shot which is the second highest in the league and 34 of their chances created came from fouls drawn which is the third most in the league. West Ham like to do most of their tackling in the defensive third with 206 tackles in the defensive third and most of their pressuring in the mid third with 1,302 pressures in the mid third. For the conclusion, West Ham have been one of the surprise packages so far this season. The aerial ability and compact defence is there for all of us to see. It hasn't really mattered whether they played a 5-4-1 or a 4-2-3-1, they've managed to be defensively resilient and capable of scoring gold regardless. With West Ham currently sitting in 5th place, they continue to challenge for a place in Europe and look like one of the toughest sides to break down in the Italian league. So there it is, a tactical analyst of Moises 4231 and West Ham in 2020 21. For now, we are going to check how I managed to get West Ham into the Champions League with the David Moyes 4231 Football Manager 2021 tactic. So first off, we're just going to skim around the results quickly. In the Premier League, we managed to finish second, which is quite ridiculous if you think about it. We played 38 games, we won 26, we drew 7 and we lost 5. In the Emirates Cup, we got knocked out in the third round by Norwich City. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals by Arsenal. So here we are, we've got the 4-2-3-1. We've actually got two versions of the 4-2-3-1. So we have this one and we have one that is more engaged. So if you don't want the opponents to be playing from the defence, we've got a more of engaging tactic. We've also got the five defender one which wasn't really as effective as the 4231. So I'll just load up here. Here we have the 541 formation from David Moyes, which I don't believe is as effective, and I didn't really spend that much time creating this tactic. So we are going to focus on the 4231. This tactic will be available for you. So in goal, we do have a sweeper keeper on the defend duty. That's just my preference on football manager. For the left back, Aaron Creswell. I have put cross more often and cross aim to the centre. His role is the wing back on the support duty. He will still get further forward helping overload or overlap on the flanks and he will run wide with the ball but also cross into the centre and cross more often as Cresswell does but for the right back he just has to cross aim into the centre. In defence we have a central defender who is going to be playing more direct passes. If we do get a counter attack or he does see a counter attack that can happen I want him to play a more direct ball into the flanks for our speed 
the wingers, just like an analyst and his defensive partner for the very first time. I've used a no-nonsense centre-back on Football Manager 2021. It worked as a treat. It does his job. In defensive midfield, we have defensive midfielder on the defend duty simply because if you read the description of the defensive midfielder, this is someone that can reorganise your defence after a period of opposition pressure. Now, if you are using the defensive midfielder role, it's likely you aren't expecting a lot of possession. And for the Thomas Uchek role, we have the box-to-box -box midfielder. Of course, he is that very solid box-to-box -box midfielder, Thomas Uchek. Now, I have shoot more often. You don't need that. You can remove that. I really wouldn't use it if I was you in case he starts losing too much possession. But he does have get further forward, close down more, which I will explain why in a little bit. And he does have tackle harder. On the flanks, we have two wingers instead of inverted wingers because I told you once they get on the ball, they start to become inverted or they cut inside with the ball. But that role in Football Manager is kind of an attacking one. Once your team come inside with the ball, you are now becoming a little bit more offensive and it's more of a risk if you then do lose the ball. If I put Jared Bowen on the flanks now, if he constantly keeps coming inside with the ball, if he does lose the ball, we can become defensively exposed, especially on the flanks. If you are a winger and you get the ball and you start to run wider the ball, if you do lose the ball in wider areas, at least your players are positioned in wider areas. He's not going to consistently run wider the ball. He's actually he actually might mix this up in his game if he gets under the ball he may have a tendency to cut inside because that's what he likes to do that is his player trait he will not consistently run outside with the ball and act like a winger 100 of the time basically and the winger on the left flank he has closed down more and tackle harder i'm not exactly sure why that is there so i would just remove that in attacking midfield, we have the shadow striker. He will close down more and mark tighter. Again, I will explain a little bit why when I'm talking about my out of possession. And up top for the Antonio role, we have the pressing forward on the support duty. Now, the reason why I didn't give him an attack duty, he's just too detached from the rest of the team and maybe it's easy for the opponents to play through him. So for the team instructions, for the mentality, we are on balance. The attacking width is set to standard. For the approach play, we are passing into space. We're going to try and exploit any space that we can create on the counter attack. We are going to be focusing play down each flank, left and right. Now, be careful when you use this or make sure you understand when you use this because this doesn't strictly mean all of your attacks will happen down the flanks. It only gives your team the tendency to attack down the flanks. It may not happen if your tactic isn't suited for it and you have these instructions on then lightly, it's not really going to have an effect. And we also do have play out of the defence, again similar to the focus play. It doesn't mean it's going to happen all the time, especially if I don't have the players for it. Now you can see that I have a central defender who can play out of the defence, but I have a no-nonsense centre-back which is kind of anti-play out of defence. Now the reason why I did use it, it helps reduce a gap between my defence and my midfield. For the passing directness, we have left it on standard. The reason being we have gone for the higher tempo. We don't want to lose the ball consistently. We don't want to be poor in possession because we still have likes of Aaron Creswell and we also have the likes of Declan Rice who are still confident and comfortable on the ball. In the final third, we are going to float the crosses trying to exploit our aerial presence and we are going to be shooting on target because we do have a balanced mentality. Naturally, players aren't going to be positive and West Ham, when it comes to creating chances such as shots taken, they are a positive side so we do have shot so we do have shoot on site and we do have be more expressive which was the tactical tweak i made halfway through the season in transition when the possession has been lost we don't really do anything we could actually do regroup but regroup is in the second tactic again i will explain why so much explaining to do when possession has been won we are going to counter press and when the goalkeeper is in possession he will distribute it quickly out of possession, we have the higher defence line and we have the standard line of engagement. Now, for the mid block, you can go for standard and standard. But what David Moyes wants is to be compact. And on Football Manager, you don't really get any compactiveness when you are using a standard line of engagement and standard defence line. You actually achieve more compactness when you have a higher defence line with a standard line of engagement. If you can see by the demonstration here, if we start to move the line of engagement, if we bring it down to lower or standard, you can see that it, the gap is reducing. For that reason being, I went for the standard line of engagement and the higher defence line. For the pressing intensity, once they have breached that line of engagement, we're not just going to sit there. In the mid third, we are going to then engage in our tackles and try and win the ball there. 
So that is it for the number one tactic. For the number two tactic, the engage, which is probably which is way more effective on Football Manager 2021, by the way. So if you are looking for a good Football Manager 2021 tactic, use this one. It's called RDF's David Moyes 4231 West Ham Engaged instead of Recreation. The difference between this one, we have the much higher line of engagement and in transition, we will be regrouping. Our players will be getting back into their defensive positioning. Now, that is literally the only tweak. For the 5-4-1, we're not going to talk too much about this because it doesn't really matter. We don't really use this whatsoever. For the squad statistics, Marco Mikel Antonio scored 21 goals. He was the top goal scorer. Andrei Yarmolenko came in second with nine goals. For Nows came in with eighth. And Thomas Suchek, he managed to score seven goals, which is it's decent for a box-to-box midfielder and football manager with an average rating of 7.4. So he was still one of the key players. Aaron Cresswell was the highest performer for me at West Ham, which is no surprise. Jared Bolden is there, Diop is there, and Mikel Antonio. And lastly, before we end this video, we do have training schedules. Well, we just have the one, it's for the one week. I didn't make a schedule for when there are two matches in the week, but what you can do if there are two matches in the week, because West Ham didn't have that many, just go to set pieces, go to two matches, and then you can kind of tweak that schedule around. And you can just look at this main one. So the main one, we are focusing heavily on set pieces. On the Thursday and Friday, you can see defensive shape and attack and movement. That is when we're going to be focusing on our match tactics. But during the week, it's mainly focusing on set pieces. We do have team bonding. On the Monday, we do look at the match tactics as well, alongside tactical training and the outfield training. Now that my friends is the end of this video thank you guys for watching thank you guys for staying in tune my name is rdf and this has been a pleasure recording this video for you guys so make sure if you are new or you haven't yet hit the like button hit the subscribe button and leave a comment i will see you soon stay safe and shout out to all of my patreons